Hi everyone, this is Module 9, Case Problem 4, Canyon Properties. And right off the bat, I'm going to save this just as you guys should all be doing, just so that um, I don't accidentally write over it. There are a few things initially in this assignment that I just would not do that, um, well, I just think they're poorly written instructions, as usual. So let's see here. Okay, MM, revised... Canyon prop. I'm just going to put that. That's fine. And I'm saving it in my Sierra College. It's different than yours. But anyway, okay. So here we go. There are some things that I recommend that you change. And we're just going to go off the grid right away. And I always take the color off. As you know by now, you don't have to. You may do what you choose. Actually, I've been remiss. In case I didn't show you this before, if you hold down Shift and select the end and then you select this and you go no fill and black text you can change all of your pages at one time yay okay moving on in case I have ultimately been remiss in this as well when you have all your sheets selected and you have selected my favorite little triangle up here you can also unmerge cells for all your sheets that should be again one of your regular habits when opening a document as you will notice when you scroll through these, all of them have the, hen the heading Canyon Properties. The only reason I'm not going to recommend you change that is when you get down here to Financial Statements and Depreciation, they're really long um, landscape type forms and your heading's just going to not match anyway. I might actually leave it to the left. As you can see, I changed this uh, documentation sheet. I take the damn lines out because uh, they bug me. And uh, again, all subjective. Here we go. So on step three, um, actually, yeah, it says three. A reference error appears in the, through the workbook um, if in the financial statement worksheet. So if we look here, okay, so there is a reference error. Here's the deal. There's a reference error because there is nothing in the cell depreciation C10. It's all reference errors. So let's just skip that, and we'll make a note and revisit it should we need to. I don't think we need to. So let's just skip three and four and move on to step five. Now step five, I'm going to insert something here and I believe that you need to name cells before you go any further. Okay, so now I pretty much have it the way I want it. I would take all of these lines off. I hate them, but you guys should know that by now. Again, I think professionally in any office situation, I've already taken them off there, in any office situation, I don't know about here. I'm going to leave these because I'm not sure how I feel about those yet, whether we need them. Probably not, but I'm going to leave them for now. Okay, so now we are on step 5A, but we have, oh, you should have named cells. When you pull down your little name box, if you've named the cells as I have, you should have stuff like this. Again, there's no rhyme or reason, no rules to what you name things as long as it's clear. Um, there are, so when you click in there, years to hold, annual inflation. Ideally, if you were to get hit by a bus tomorrow, someone could sit in your seat and know what the heck your form was supposed to show. Now, in things like future value and present value, PV and FV are common abbreviations, so I stuck with those. But ideally, like approved percentage rate if you're buying a car would be APR, those kinds of things. Uh, then I did... I named a couple of cells on the depreciation sheet. I named salvage value and salvage years. I'm not sure that we're going to need them, but it is a good habit to get into because those things, while the values may change, what they represent will possibly be used in formulas. So now um, to instruction 5A. In cell B5 on home info, otherwise known as years to hold, this is also going to help you learn the formulas much better. As I said from the beginning, enter 10. Okay, great, so we enter 10, and then in B6, we're going to enter 3.7, so that's annual inflation. Again, easier to remember when you're doing formulas. Property tax rate is 2.1. Rental income tax rate is 29.5. Again, um, easier to use in formulas when you know what they represent. B7, B8 really doesn't mean a damn thing. B938.3, so tax rate on sale. That all makes sense to me. Okay, um, 
Perfect. So now we're on the second page of the assignment. Step six. And actually, I'm going to stop the recording here. On number six, module nine, case four, we need to, let's see, instruction six, in cell B12, which if you're like me, you have named depreciated value. Let's see here. B3, let's see, B12, use F, B12 on home info, future value. So it says, oh, okay, use the future value function to calculate the future value of the home. So we need to put a formula in here, even though we've given it a name. And that is going to be equal FV, which is future value. For those of you who haven't seen me yet this semester, I, I, I'm so sorry to hear that. I wish you had. I could, um, I don't know, I think we'd all be a little more connected and this class would be going more smoothly than it is, but it sounds like most of you are fine. Um, okay, so now we need to put in the rate because this is what Excel asks us to do. Excel will lead you to the promised land if you just let it. So we want to see the inflation rate, which is in B6, or we could type annual inflation rate. See, there it is, because I named it. So you could use that as a formula, in the formula, and that helps you remember what you're doing. The annual inflation rate, and N per is number of payments, which makes because in this assignment, everything is calculated yearly, we don't have to do multiplication here. If you were doing months, it would be whatever this is right here, and you would multiply it by 12. But we're not doing that here. We're just doing years to hold because they're doing it on an annual basis. So then we put a comma, and we go to the next step, and that is going to be payment, which is PMT, which, if you may remember, sometimes you have to do negative. As I said, you have to use the negative, but, uh, okay, so XL wants payment right here, and here it wants a 0 or a 1 to see if it's going to be at the beginning of the period because this is an annual. Okay, so now comma, and it wants present value. So I click right there, and then I put close parenthesis, enter. But see, we have a problem. See how it looks like that? That's not what we want. We want, and this is how I was taught it. I think you can put the minus in several different locations. I was just taught by Professor Bushnell to put it here. It tends to get messy when you put it in the formula. There we go. And there's an annual payment for you. I'm sorry. Future value for you. Oh, I see. Okay. Got it. So we're back to these air things. And I'm I'm recommending that we just do what, what I'm going to show you right here. This is uh, an amount that has already been calculated, and it tells you K11 of the depreciation worksheet. Now, here's where we ran into those errors, but I suggest we do the following. Put the equal sign, click on this sheet, click on K11, and enter. Now, there's a reference there, but have no fear. We will work it out. Let's move on to the next one. The taxable gain on the property is the difference between year 10's future value in cell B12 and its depreciated value in cell B13. So those are going to be right here on this sheet because I've named them. So taxable gain is going to be equal to future value, let's see here, B12, actually, yeah, future value, minus depreciated value, which is B13. So you could just type D if you named it depreciated value right there. And then that way, it's a lot easier to understand than B7, B11, hit enter. I understand there's a reference. Just bear with me. Step nine, calculate the resale tax based on the tax rate on the sale applied to the taxable gain. That's a fancy and very confusing way of telling you that the resale tax is going to be equal to the amount that we gained here times the tax rate on the sale, which we've named. And look at that. Isn't that lovely? I understand. We still have a reference. Bear with me. It'll work itself out. Step 10 is where we're going to resolve our problems. So we want to click on the financial statements worksheet, our problems with the reference and the values. In cell C6, and I did not name these 
because there's rental income for year one, year two, year three. You could do that, but it's just more work than it's worth, in my opinion. Enter 36000 Nice. Enter. Here's the key. You have to make sure that your cells are formatted as accounting. So let's just do that right now. So if we take all these and you just hold down the shift key and go over here to the, well, let's see. This is the end. I'm not holding down the shift key now, but we clicked on that first cell. We're going to hold down the shift key. And we're going to just go like this. Okay. And so that selected that area. We're going to format that all as accounting. Let's go down here and let's say accounting with no decimal points because we don't need them. It just would make this form look very confusing. And no symbol. Say OK. OK, so now they're all formatted correctly. The formulas will work. So now we want to extrapolate the income. What an interesting way to put it. I don't think it's necessary to be that fancy, but essentially here's what you need to do. This is where we put the value. We're going to leave that highlighted, and we're going to select all of this and then follow the directions in the book, which is to just go up here. Instead of autofill, we're going to pull down on this series, rows, because it's going to be across the same row, growth, and the value is going to be 1.04. So it'll be the 36,000 plus 4% with each year. Now let's say OK. Ta-da! That is a pretty cool feature. I'm not sure I would have used the word extrapolate, but anyway, there we go. So now it wants us to enter year one values in these other, let's see, property taxes, and then 3,200 maintenance, and 2,500 for miscellaneous. So let's just see if we can do them all at the same time. Okay, so if we go up here and do the same thing, fill, series, growth, and it says 3.5%, so that would be 0 0.035. And it worked, fantastic. Now if this were me and it were my assignment, I would do the total like this. And I would hit my little E up here. Oh dear. Let's see what I did here. I need to see my heading. Oh, depreciation's not in yet. Oops, I skipped a step. Okay, so I'm just going to say the book's really unclear here. Um, but if we go to the depreciation sheet and see right here, present value, well, we know what that is. And I named the cell. I don't know if you did. But if you did, you just type equals PV. And that gives you the $350,000, which is the present value, according to this sheet. So then if you notice, everything else filled in, except for right here. But I undid that. This is um, very confusing the way this is done. Let's do first things first and make sure everything is in the accounting format, because as we all know, that, that affects how formulas go. So... Um, And then because these are all in dollars, we're going to do the same thing here. Not currency, never currency. Always accounting, no dollar sign. No decimal points except for payroll and percentage. Okay, good. So now if we put present value here, which is equal PV, 
which we named the cell from before, fills in everything, but it doesn't fill in this one, and I'm not really sure why. The book is not very clear on this at all, but if we do go here and see these, you'll see that there's a DB, which is declining balance depreciation calculation. Let's just use that same formula in here. But because I named the cells, we're going to have to do it differently. PV, the name, not the function, salvage value, and then B6 is salvage years. And then B9 is just year one. I would leave it just as B9. Hit enter. Now, let's see here what I did. Uh, I accidentally put a multiplication. That doesn't need to be there. Now I think everything will be fine. Okay. So, let's see, if we just delete these, let's see if they come out the same if we fill it, because I named the cells, I want the formulas to be the same. It does come out the same. It's back to currency, so we don't want that. Let's see, accounting, okay, so that's correct. So let's just see if we can do this. Format painter. And just format paint all these. Woo! Nice. I'm really that was very confusing the way it is written in the book, but anyway, that's that's the way that's the way to do it correctly. Um, so now let's go back to step number 10E, which where I did the auto sum. So now if we just fill this down, because we've got the depreciation in there now. Uh, again, I'm so sorry. I apologize for the textbook. It's written very confusingly. I still think it's important to name the cells. And so if you look in each one of these, it is summing them. That should be correct. And now this is just a simple... This is going to be equals the rental income minus total expenses. And then we're just going to fill it. We're going to use an if statement here, just like the book says. Equal if. So the logical test we want to use is if the pre-tax income is greater than zero, comma, then it will be the pre-tax income times the rental income tax rate, which is what I named it. And if it's false, it'll just be zero. Does that work? Let's see. So if we fill it down like this, let's see what happens. Looks good. So now 10H, calculate here. It's going to be this. Minus this, enter, and we can just fill down. I'm going to stop the video because I have a size limit and uh, I want to make sure I don't go over it.